Dr. Love, give us a song of worship and preparation tonight. Thank you, sir. I will trust in the Lord. he was ready for that this morning, this, this, this evening. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Love. Thank all of you for your presence here tonight. Certainly, we are grateful for this privilege. Uh, 
I knew we would have annual day blues today, but uh, it's enough of us for worship. Amen. 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 Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you again for the privilege to come before your people. We ask God that you will do exceedingly abundantly. Grant us your presence. Grant us your grace. Give us your power. Give us your anointing. Help us to minister at this hour. Those that are here and those that may be viewing. God, we need to hear a word from you. Speak to our hearts and minds so that we, your people, will be the better. It is in your name we pray. Amen. While you're resting on your feet, while you're resting on your feet, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Let's do those verses responsibly. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly is plenty, plenteous, but the labors are few. Together. Amen. God bless you. I want to talk about <laughs> models for ministry. Models for ministry. Sigmund Ford says that all human behavior is learned, which is to say that whatever we have obtained, or whatever we are doing, we got it from somebody, that we've learned behavior from somebody. And it's all right to learn from somebody, just learn the right things and learn from the right somebody. Growing up, I wanted to be like my daddy. I wanted to be just like my daddy. My daddy was a strong black man. He believed in at least two things, maybe three. Working hard, maybe four. Working hard. Protecting and providing for his family. And then, of course, worshiping God. Those were traits, those were the models I had growing up, which uh, has left an impression upon me that even to this day I believe in working hard. I have a strong work ethic. Uh, I believe in taking care of home. I believe in providing for my family and protecting my family. And of course, I believe in worshiping God. And as a minister, when I first started preaching, there were some preachers that I looked up to, and I modeled my preaching after them. Of course, one was my pastor, Dr. Bishop Love, Pastor Ray, Frank Ray. But I had others, Jasper Williams, Jerry Black, Donald Parsons. And in my early preachings, you could perhaps Hear some of their sermons. And hear some of their ways because I modeled after them. But at some point, you got to get your own voice because God didn't call you to duplicate. As my pastor would say, when you try to imitate someone, they ain't there and you ain't there either. And so people are cheated when you try to be somebody you're not. 
But it's always good to learn some things and to model them some good things that you can glean and gather from someone. Because the thing of it is, God has created you to be your authentic self. There is some God in all of us. There is some geniuses in all of us. And don't treat um, or allow the world to miss out on the gift that God has placed in you. Just be who God has made you. But that is one in which we can emulate and duplicate without losing ourselves. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gives us a model in which to follow. He gives us a shadow, a vision, if you will, of what we can look at to obtain, to try to be like, and to emulate so that we can bring the kingdom of God to planet Earth. Matter of fact, he wants us to be his example, but before we go there, we must look and face some of the flaws in which ministry and the church have. I don't want to beat up on the church, but we've got to face our deficiencies. And there are some flaws and some failures because we don't look like our Savior. We don't look like the Jesus that's in Scripture. And if we're going to obtain, if we're going to grow, if we're going to get better, we got to face our flaws and our failures. A couple of things here that I've come up with in just my experience with the church. We must face our discrimination. How we discriminate against people who don't look like us, act like us, sound like us, smell like us, wear what we wear. We've got to be careful that we don't discriminate because my Bible tells me whosoever will let them come. We, we have a God who says that I love the entire world. For God so loved the world. I, I, I know we, 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 got to, we got to deal with repentance and we've got to deal with judgment. I know we got to deal with that, but we've got to also deal with the aspect of a God who does not discriminate. And we cannot be people who have discriminatory practices against people, particularly women. We can even go to the LGBTQ community. God did not call us to discriminate. God called us to love. But not only discrimination, our dogmas, the dogmas which means our beliefs, and our ideology, which we're not willing to change, things we have been brought up in sometimes has nothing to do with scripture. Whether we are conservative or liberal, Democrat or Republican, there are some things that have nothing to do with Scripture, but we are so bent on our dogmas, we are so bent on our beliefs that we will not change. And I know you got to hold on to your truth, but hold on to your truth gently. Because when God shows us another way and another move, we have to go with what God is saying. 
our detachment, that we become detached from community and social justice, that we come in here and act as if the world don't exist, that we live in the utopia of this la-la land. But the church must be integrated and, 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 and connected to society. What good is a church in a community if it does not make the community better? And if our church can leave Orange Mound and Orange Mound don't miss us, then what kind of church were we? We should have such an impact. If we were to close shop today, the community should be saying, well, where, where New Hope at? Where is the church that's set on a hill? Because we must stay connected and not allow ourselves to be detached. Fourthly, our disorganization. What I mean by disorganization, church is the only place we do things at the last minute. No planning. We have a dare to do mentality. Church is the only place where it's okay if technology is behind. So I, I get it. I, I understand how uh, the white churches are doing so much better because they don't mind bringing technology into the sanctuary. That they don't mind using technology. technology. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I believe in preaching the gospel. I believe in true and authentic worship. But there are some things we can use so we won't look so antiquated. Yeah. It is said that church is 20 years behind society. Yeah. I never said get the first time I put up these screens. I had pushback. And we don't need no screen. We ain't big enough for no screen. Well, we use screens for more than just visual. There's information we can get from the screen. Some of you can't even see your Bible. I know you're carrying it, but you appreciate Scripture being on the screen so you, you can see it. There are just a lot of things we can do with technology, and the church must become organized to the place. We won't do everything at the last minute and believe we can have good ministry and showing up late. What organization or institution that is ever good and the people show up late? Tell me what institution or organization. There is no institution or organization that you claim as good and the people come when they want. If it's a good school, you dropping your children off. They got some issues if you're bringing them late. Because they believe in starting on time. Matter of fact, you go places and depending on the place, you understand that they're going to start on time because this is an institution. This is an organization that will honor time. Fifthly, our disingenuous. Too many fake and phony folks. I ain't talking about y'all. I ain't talking about y'all. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm, I'm talking about the mothers that ain't here tonight. I ain't talking about y'all. I ain't talking about y'all. And there are some that when they come, and especially when they set by visitors and new members, I'm praying, Lord, please don't let that spirit get in the net. And there are people who have tried the church, and because they ran into church folks, have left ministry only to never return. Here's the last one, and here's the big one. 
our deception. Tell the truth. Be a ministry of truth. Tell the people the truth. I can't tell y'all money coming. I can't tell you this is your season. I can't tell you in 14 days you're going to have a check in the mail. God ain't gave me that revelation. And I know there is a side of the gospel that speaks of prosperity, and I thank God for prosperity, but that ain't all of the gospel. The gospel is more than just prosperity. And we equate our ministry to who want to be a millionaire, to new cars and new houses and new money and new boo. But the real issue is, Sometimes we got to suffer. Most times our ministry involves suffering. Jesus here becomes our model for things here. Now I'm, I'm just about done. Jesus becomes our model here. He gives us a model for ministry. If you hadn't closed your Bible, let's look here a minute. Verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages. And Jesus went about, here is the first one, the method of ministry. Jesus went to the city, to the villages, to the country, to the countryside, to the seashores, to the mountains, and yes, even the synagogue. We cannot afford to equate our ministry just within these four walls. It must expand beyond the four walls. Jesus went to where the people were. And if they don't come to church, we got to take the church to them. And sometimes we got to even take it to our home and to our houses and to our jobs and to people who don't know. We have to be a representative of the church and make the church look good and feel good where somebody will want to say I want to know where you go because there's something about your spirit there's something about your character that says you got something I don't have and we should exude we should express we should demonstrate the good side of the church some of us are guilty of giving the church a bad name. There are some members I tell them, don't you tell folks you go to New Hope <laughs> in Orange Mound and that your pastor is holding the Don't you tell folks that because you're giving us a bad rap. The way you act and the way you carry yourself. There ought to be something about your life yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. that is sweet and kind. Yes, sir. There should be something about your life who will stand on what's true and just and what's right. There should be something about your life that demonstrate and show the image and likeness of God. The method of his ministry is a going ministry. New Hope, where we going? Is this it, Jess? Right here in this sanctuary? This is only the place where you and I should get inspired and motivated 
to want to run with what we've got and tell somebody else. These good sermons and Bible studies, you really should let go to waste. Y'all should re-preach and reteach what is being taught and said. Because if we're going to be a church that is impactful, if we're going to be a church that is going to model a ministry of Christ, it's got to go beyond the sanctuary. It cannot be just at church. The only time you churchy is at church. Only time you're spiritual is at church. I should be able to come on your job and record and, and they give testimony. That's a child of God right there. I wish I had a little help in here. The model of ministry, but not only the model of ministry, the message of ministry. Look at verse 35 again. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sick and every disease among the people. The ministry is threefold. First, he had a teaching ministry. A teaching ministry. A teaching ministry. Somehow when you put teaching, school, uh, institution, or education uh -huh. on something, right. on. folks don't want that. Right. They don't want right. teaching. But y'all, we need, we need teaching. teaching. Yeah. You cannot get it all just on a Sunday morning and preaching. There are some who love the preaching, but they don't want no teaching. And a lot of that is they want to be entertained because, you know, preaching carries the, the charisma of being entertained, and, but there are so many gaps in preaching. When I'm preaching a lot of time, I look back over my notes and there's a whole lot I missed. A whole lot I wanted to say, I didn't say. But I got caught up in that moment. And y'all went with me and the ministry music hit the keys and I done shot off. I done just went on. And the church just go on up and we just go on and shout our way on out of here. But that teaching moment where we are getting instruction, that teaching moment where we can raise our hand, and then that teaching moment where we are thinking critically, I think a lot of times church folks just dumb down and we don't want to think critically, but teaching causes us to think, and teaching causes us to discipline ourselves to think and to study. Yeah. We have to do things like call it, can't call it Bible study, we have to call it midweek service. Yeah. You know, they'll come out for midweek service, but if you say Bible study, that's for babies and children. Yeah. But how many know grown folks yeah. need to be taught? Yeah. It is said, Preaching will bring you out of the world, but teaching brings the world out of you. And how many know we got some word, world still in us and some ways in us? And there are some things I have yet to practice initially through the preaching, but when I went through the teaching, was able to walk yes, 
in the word and to see it for myself, it made the world of difference. So Jesus won, he taught, but then he preached. And we like the preaching, but we can't omit the teaching. Some of us don't like the preaching or the teaching, but we need both preaching and teaching. And I know we've come to a place now where we like the preacher not to holler at us. And we don't want him to tune up because we are educated now. And we don't need all of that, just talk the word out. But Jesus said, I did both. I preached and I t taught. But then he says, the healing, that we should have a message of preaching, teaching, and healing. So what does that look like? That looked like meeting the needs of the people. Bishop Love and I, we were talking Sunday. He was sharing with us on how to get the folks on Wednesday night. And I know how to get them. I know how to get them. If I'd have said, y'all, we're going to have a fish fry. Fish and spaghetti. Before, before worship tonight. We would have had 50% more just with that. Just with that alone. Now, I know, I understand the needs of people need to be met. And Jesus met their needs many times before he gave them the spiritual. He gave them the healing. Then he turned around and shared the spiritual. And we have to be cognizant and cautious of the fact that we just can't give the spiritual without giving the physical. And at some place and at some point, we've got to give some of the physical. But there are some, there are some issues with that, I know, and I've been around long enough, you've been around long enough, because I've seen it where they'll show up for the food, but they won't show up for the word. They'll, they'll show up for the meal, but they'll miss out on the message. I know at the Union Mission, well, well, we uh, preach and teach sometime, he have a, a pack house wall to wall. And I know and he know that a lot of them are in there because it is mandatory if they're going to eat and have a place to stay, you got to go to chapel. And although it looks good, we know what's behind the scene. And I know that can be a flaw, but I think it is still necessary for us to be in a position where we can give of resources. And hopefully gain, because the word is that my word shall not return void. And sometimes, although they may take off, that word has planted a seed. And some of us understand the power of the word because that word got us one day. And that word germinated in our spirit. And that word grew. That's why we are here tonight at a Bible study because we got enough word in us to know we need some more word. That's, that's what having word in you will do. It will let you know you need more word. And so the message of the ministry is threefold. We must be a ministry that will teach, will preach, and will heal. We got to meet some needs. Problem. That's going to cost us. We got to sacrifice. We got to give a little more. Because food will cost us. 
us. Clothes will cost us. Shoes will cost us. But we've got to be willing to make the sacrifice if we're going to model the ministry of Jesus. Y'all still with me? Two more here. Two more. We're done. Look at verse 36. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. The mercy of ministry. The mercy of ministry. He was moved with compassion. This is why it is critical and important that we have people in leadership who have a heart of compassion for people. When I first got here, I had folks who were over youth ministry and didn't like children. Yeah, really. Had people who were over pastoral care and didn't care for the past. We are at an election time and we have to be careful of people who we put in office who don't have compassion for people but they're there for their own self-interest and what they can gain. And so ministry must be filled with people who got some mercy, who got some compassion on people. For when he saw that they were faint, he was moved with confession. When he saw that they were weary, when he saw that they were worn, when he saw that they were weak, when he saw when they were without, he was moved with compassion. What do you feel and what do you see when you look at our world and our society? How do you feel when you look at Orange Mound? Are you moved with compassion or are you moved with disgust? Are you moved with discrimination? They had no shepherd. They had no leader. With this being Black History Month, we keep hearing from the voices of the African American community, who is our next leader? Who will lead us? Who will shepherd us? Who will be that prophetic voice who will be that prophet Reverend Ralford shared in our Sunday school that we need more Jeremiah's and Habakkuk's to rise up and stand to speak on what thus says the Lord and who will speak on what is right and what is true and what is just but they have to be people who are connected to God where they have a love for people. How can you lead folks you don't love? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know some pastors who are great pastors. You probably got videos and tapes and look at them and praise and blah, but behind the scene, they don't like, they don't like y'all. They don't like y'all. All of them armor bearers and stuff, they are they're caught, they trying to keep y'all away. They don't want folks and people. But I think shepherds ought to smell like the sheep. And so that's why I hang out with y'all and hug y'all and come to y'all parties and so forth, because I have compassion. Let me leave here. Let me leave. Here's, here's, here's the bombshell. This is where I've been trying to get all night. And uh, five minutes and, and I'm going to wrap it up here. We're done here. Verse, verse 37. 
Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. Here is the must of ministry. Each one of us need to pray that the Lord will send us a harvest. Every ministry leader in here, every position here at Hope, we need help. We need some more folks. We need some more folks. We need some more people. Every one of y'all have, during our meetings, we all have stress. We, we need some more help. We need some more people. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it ain't so much the crowd. Jesus understood crowds. I understand crowds. There's nothing in a crowd, y'all. People hide behind the crowd. He says, I need you to pray for laborers, servants, disciples. Don't get me wrong. I thank God for sending folks. I thank God for people. But what I'm really praying for is people who will labor, who will serve who will be discipled, who got the right spirit, who care about people, who come willing to work, who willing to serve, understanding what this is about and knowing that it's not about them and not having any other agenda other than to serve God and uplift God. Pray for the harvest. The Lord will send not just people, but the right people. Because if anything we need is the right folks. And being associated with a fraternity, I understand. We, we, we've got a, we got a, we got a slogan called members versus men. And, and we understand it don't take a lot. If you can just get a few who got the right spirit, who understand what this is about, and who have come not to lead, but to serve, to have a servant spirit. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointed or discouraged by numbers because I understand what two can do. And if you ain't careful, two gonna get four. And four get eight. And eight will get 16. And 16 will get 32. And 32 will get 64. And y'all know how that math goes. But if you can get the right people in the right places, we're able to do wonders. But notice he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest. It is God who controls the harvest. He's in charge of growth. That's why when I open the doors, I, I, I see some members, boy, they, and, and I really don't hold the doors open long. Now, y'all y'all been to some churches. They hold it. Oh, I really don't hold it long. But even in my short span, I see members looking at me like. <laughs> Deacon's hands be way up here. And they move all the way down to the, the hip. It really ain't long. But then they start turning around looking at me. And, 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 but, but, but here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. It is God who's in charge of 
sending the harvest, and we're praying to the Lord of harvest. But here's what the farmer understands, particularly when we talk of the harvest. This is what the farmer understands. The farmer understands we can't control the harvest, but we can do what we can do. We can plant the seed. We can cultivate the ground. We can pull the weeds away so that God can do what God do. And so he can give us a harvest. And I believe new hope. I believe if you all got the right spirit, we are on point for a harvest. We've been waiting, we've been praying for a harvest. I believe the Lord will give us what we've been praying for. I've seen it too many times. God will show up and give us just what we need. I had, had a member, had a, had a, not a member, but a pastor was called me. He was so excited. He said, Pastor, I had 20 members to join. I don't know where these folks came from. And I said, I'll tell you where they came from. The Lord sent them. And true enough, they were God sent. They wasn't just members on the road. They were members coming to work and to build the kingdom of God. They were members who came to serve. And that's where our prayer should lie Pray to the Lord of harvest that he will send us because the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. And what you got to know about the harvest is that the harvest is time sensitive. And we got to get while the getting is good. We got to go after it. We got to cultivate, do our part so that the Lord will send us a harvest. New hope. Do y'all want to harvest? Do y'all believe in a harvest? Do y'all believe that the Lord will send us what we need? Or do you believe our best days are behind us? I don't subscribe to that. I believe the best is yet to come. I believe God still got some more blessings, some more breakthroughs, some more deliverance, some more joys, some more people. He's going to send our way. I might be the only fool in here that believe that, but I'm fool enough to believe God. I've seen him move. So our job, ladies and gentlemen, is to pray. Cultivate. Do our part so the Lord will send a harvest. And when that harvest show up, I want you to ease up next to me so I can tell you, I told you. I told you. But we've got to trust God and allow his model for ministry to be our model. If his ministry was successful, our ministry can be successful if we follow the model. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Come on, let us all stand. Let us all stand. Extending the invitation. Don't y'all get weary in well doing. We're extending the invitation. We pray for the harvest. We pray the Lord will send those that need to be a part of this church family. Come on, we're waiting. Wow.
and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Boy, y'all were standing. Y'all didn't want to sit down tonight on that one. All right. All right. Good, good, good. All right. Urshas are coming. Urshas are on the way. Tonight will be a good night for you to make your pledge as far as our sacrificial offering. If you hadn't done that, tonight will be a great opportunity to get that in and get it done. Yeah. Right now, we're kind of setting at, uh, well, I'll give you the exact number, but I think we're right at 49, 49, 48 or 49. So uh, we're a long ways to go, about halfway there. Uh, but we can do it if everybody help. Amen. Amen. Let me thank you all for Sunday. Sunday was tremendous. It was great. It was awesome. You all have made me the richest pastor in the world. The richest pastor in the world. And it has nothing to do with money or resources. What has made the difference is your love. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. And I am rich because of your love. Thank you so much for pouring your love out. And you expressed it and it showed in so many ways. Got your cards, got your love gifts. Thank you so much, New Hope. After 17 years, y'all still love y'all pastor. And uh, thank you for loving on Lady Hop. Amen. Amen. She had. She had real long hair Sunday, but she, she still got it, I guess. She still got it. Certainly glad to have our friends, the loves, always. We always, we, we might need you to be the male corps for uh, Sunday. I don't know what Brother C.J. you have in mind, but uh, we may have to, I don't see any male corps. We're gonna have to lock the doors, all men. Might, might have to get our preachers and deacons to stay for our male corps, but uh, we'll be okay, we'll be okay. Either way, we're gonna be okay. Um, Sunday, Sunday, if you have African attire, we're gonna dress out in our African attire, so get your, uh, your suits and dresses and dashikis together, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna finish out our Black History Month with a bang, so let's prepare for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, glad to see all of you here tonight. Let's take our gift, whatever we're going to give. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 8. Let's say it together. But I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he was so aboundly shall Every man, according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, having all, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God, we thank you again for the privilege, the opportunity to give back a portion of what you've already blessed us with. We thank you for the gift and giver, blessing in us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, if you just come from wherever you are. Amen. Is there anything to claim our attention? Anything to claim our attention before we leave? I hope I'm not missing anyone or anything. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us all stand. All night. 
and all day the angels keep watching over me I did go to stay. The angels keep watching over me, my Lord. My soul got happy and I stayed all day. Keep watching over me. Lord, we thank you for the close of another worship experience. Lord, we need angelic presence as we make ready to go down from this place. We need angels of mercy and traveling grace. Thank you for your angels that watched over us last night. The angels that kept us all day. Now we need angels to watch us again as we attempt to sleep and slumber. God, we ask now that you will keep your people as only you can. We lift before you all of our sick and bereaved. We ask God that you will do what only you can do. Now in the only name that matter, he that conquered Calvary, he that died and rose again, in the sweet name of Jesus, we say thank you and we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.